Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Steggy and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create a live streaming setup for Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Mixer, etc. for under $300. So this is sort of a follow-up to my last video where I went over how to create a budget YouTube setup for under $100. And the point of this video series is to show you don't need to sink thousands of dollars into your setup in order to create great looking content. So if you ever thought, man, I'd love to get into content creation, but I don't have that much money to sink into it. I just wanna show you that you can get great looking results for just a couple hundred dollars. Okay, so before I get into the setup, I wanna cover what this setup entails because there are a couple of underlying assumptions here. Uh, one is that you have a TV or monitor to play on, and two, uh, that you have a mouse or keyboard in order to control things on your computer. So if you don't have these and you're really on a budget, you can go to a flea market or like a Goodwill and pick these up for next to nothing. I guess another underlying assumption is that you have like a home to play in with like electricity and internet, but I think that those are kind of prerequisites that we can agree that if you're watching this video, you meet. So this setup I've created covers a computer that's capable of both streaming, uh, playing games, or doing both at the same time, uh, a mic so your audience can hear you, a webcam so your audience can see you, and how you can light everything up so it all looks good. So first, let's start with the PC. Now, one of the inspirations of this video came from another YouTube channel called Alpha Gaming, where Harris and his friend Andy came across a computer at a university surplus store for $40. Now, this is one of those computers that the university used in their library or media lab uh, so people can get on the internet or do projects depending on what the school was. Uh, so this computer ended up having a fourth generation i7 in it, and it got me thinking about how many capable and fairly powerful machines there are out there that you know people sort of just forget about because they're a number of years old. So to be clear, finding a fourth generation i7 computer for $40 is not the norm. It's sort of like coming across a copy of Earthbound at a flea market for a couple of dollars. It can happen, but it's pretty rare. However, we can still take this idea and apply it towards creating a super capable setup that'll get your live stream up and running. All right. So, in order to get one of these workstations, I turn to the internet. Uh, I purchased this from Newegg's used section. This is an HP Elite Desk, uh, either 600 or 800. Uh, but you can actually look on eBay and possibly even get a better deal on these because I've seen some listings where these will be under $50, like $47 and like $13 shipping. However, the difference is those computers don't ship with an operating system. So if you do have a copy of Windows 10 or a key more specifically for it, then you can save 20 to $25. But for me, I spent $90 on this machine from Newegg. All right, so this computer actually has some pretty great bones here. It's got a fourth generation Core i5-4570 CPU, and then it's got a 450 watt power supply in it, and it's got a surprising amount of USB ports. It's got four on the front and another six in the back, so pretty great. But we do need to make a couple of upgrades before this guy is stream ready. So first up is the RAM, because this computer came with four gigs of RAM, which is simply not enough. Now, unfortunately, the fourth generation i5 uses DDR3 RAM, which is a little bit more expensive. But if you go on eBay, you can regularly find 16 gigs of DDR3 for around $30 to $35. Now, the next upgrade I want to make here is putting an SSD in here because I haven't used a spinning hard disk for my operating system in about 10 years. And so this is more just for my sanity. If you want to get an SSD, you can find them used on eBay starting at around $17. But if you really want to buy new, you can go to Amazon and you're looking more at like $25 to $30. What's cool about this computer is that you can remove a lot of parts without any tools. So you can just pop the hard drive out of there, unplug the SATA cable and the power connector, and then just plug in your SSD and you're good to go. I didn't have a sled for my SSD, so it's just sort of dangling in the case. But there's not really an issue with that, so I just went with the uh, path of least resistance there. Now, the last upgrade is also the most expensive upgrade, and that is adding a GPU to this system rather than relying on the integrated graphics. Now, my strategy here is to make the GPU the hero because the GPU can take on all the work for encoding while the rest of this system, like the processor and everything, just keeps the lights on so the GPU can really get to work. 
Okay, so for a kind of basic explanation on how a computer is used in live streaming, when you live stream, you use an encoding software like OBS to take the video incoming either from display capture or from a capture card, and it encodes that signal into a package that it can then send to Twitch or YouTube to display to all of your viewers out there. So in order to do this, it uses resources from your system like your CPU or your GPU, kind of like a computer uses your CPU and GPU in order to play the game. Now, if you're using a single PC system to both play your game and live stream, the problem is these are both intensive tasks, and if your computer's not up to snuff, it's gonna have problems doing both. And even good computers can sometimes have trouble uh, basically allocating their resources to the game or the streaming software, and so it's stuck on what to do. So either your uh, frames might drop in-game or your frames might drop on your stream. Now, a couple of years ago, NVIDIA started adding these special chips to their GPUs known as NVENC encoders. And basically what that means is they're these special dedicated chips that all they do is encode video in software that supports it. So OBS has NVENC encoding, which says, hey, the power that we need to send the video to Twitch or YouTube is in this special little chip here. So if we take the resources from here, we're not going to affect your frames while you're gaming. So if you have a GPU that has that chip, you can do a single PC stream setup where you're playing the games and live streaming at the same time with no ill effects. So we need to get one of these NVIDIA GPUs, but I'm looking for a very specific one for this system because it's gotta meet a few criteria. Number one, it's gotta be at least a GTX 10 series. The reason being is over the different generations of NVENC chips, the quality has gotten better and better. However, that is to say that it wasn't until the 10 series where the quality of NVENC actually started to contend with X264 processing, which is the CPU processing in an encoding software. Now, it wasn't until the 20 series of GPUs where NVENC actually looked as good as X264, but basically there's only a 15% difference between the NVENC of a 10 series and the NVENC of a 20 series GPU. And the criteria number two, which rules out the 20 series GPUs is, I want this to cost less than $100. And criteria number three, I need this GPU to be low profile for two reasons. Number one, this is a small form factor PC, so a full size GPU simply won't fit in here. But also number two, in these little business workstation like PCs, their power supplies don't have extra cords that can basically power GPUs. So with low profile GPUs, they actually draw all of their power from the PCIe lane, so you don't have to have a direct line from the power supply to the graphics card, which is exactly what we need for this setup. So with all of these parameters, I ended up going with the GTX 1050 low profile GPU. You can get these on eBay for around $80 to $100. However, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, you could get a GTX 1050 Ti, which will give you better performance in your gaming and basically get you more frames. And you can get those for around 125 on eBay. So this takes care of the PC, let's move on to peripherals. Let's start with the webcam. Now, it really shouldn't come as a surprise that I'm going with the Logitech C920 here because for the price point, it's really the only game in town. You can buy these on Amazon new for $50, or if you're looking to save some money, you can buy them used on Craigslist or eBay for around $30. Now, I would recommend if you are looking to save that extra dollar to purchase as used on those sites versus buying a no-name webcam on Amazon for the same price because uh, the difference between uh, a no-name $30 webcam and this used for $30 is quite jarring. So next up for the microphone, I started seeing this company called Fifine pop up on a few YouTube videos and after giving this a whirl, it actually sounds pretty good for the price. So they have two models on Amazon. They have the K669 for $30 and then they have the K670 for $40. Basically the only differences between them is the K670 has a detachable USB cable and it comes with a better mic stand. So. Depending on your budget, you could go with either of these and they're gonna sound basically the same. So with everything added together here, we're at $297. But you might be asking, where are the lights in this setup? Well, you can actually use the lighting found in your house already. Now, I'm not necessarily saying, bring all your floor lamps over to your streaming setup, though that is an option. However, there is one little hack you can use where you can actually take your monitors and use those as your lighting source. 
And to do this, all you need to do is bring up a bright web page like google.com and make sure you're on light mode. If you do this, the light coming off the monitors is actually sufficient enough to give you adequate lighting with a C920, depending on how far away your monitors are from you. And obviously, as your channel grows, the next item on your list can be softboxes for $30 or $40. But to start out, you can just use your monitors for your lighting source. All right, so this is a video and audio quality sample of the Logitech C920 and the Fifine K670 microphone. So right now I'm using zero lighting for this setup besides the light coming off of my monitors right here. So I just have a new tab open, uh, Chrome is set to light mode, so very bright images on here. And if you notice, if I switch over to something darker, then it looks a lot worse here. So uh, basically you just wanna be in light mode if you're going through this method of lighting your stream. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you are a glasses wearer like myself, uh, then that can cause reflections in your glasses during your stream. So you know, basically to avoid that, that's when you start getting the soft box lighting which you place off axis uh, so you can avoid those reflections. But you know, when you're streaming on a budget, you just gotta make do. You could either wear contacts or just deal with the reflections because it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, and so then just to show off the microphone here, uh, again, this is the K670 version with the nicer headphone stand and the detachable cable. Uh, but I'm just gonna speak a, a little closer into this to give you an idea of what it sounds like when you're um, speaking very close into the microphone, like if you have it on a mic arm or something. And they do have this little gain dial so I can turn it down and then I can raise my voice to a more normalized level uh, without having the microphone clip. Hopefully, I'm not listening to it right now. Then one thing to note about this setup right now is I actually have the C920 on top of uh, one of my 27 inch monitors. So this is what like your normal desk setup would look like on a normal desk and having the webcam there. But actually I found that placing the webcam a little closer to me, the perspective is a little bit more level. I can raise it a bit to help that. Um, but I actually think that this looks better with uh, me being closer to the webcam. Uh, the lighting source has not changed, but the picture does look dramatically better than when the webcam was farther away. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. If you have like a little tripod you can put on your desk, um, if you're, you know, maybe playing with controller, then it won't get in your way. If you're doing mouse and keyboard, then you're going to have to figure out something there. So you can have the webcam be nice and close and be nice quality without stopping you from actually playing your game. As far as the lighting behind me goes, if you have any kind of RGB lights or uh, Philips Hue lights or Nano Leaves, things of that uh, nature, um, the trick to get those to appear good on this webcam is you need to basically turn them down to 1%. They need to barely be on because anything more than like the 1% and then they're blown out and it just looks absolutely awful. So um, it doesn't look that great. Um, to, to people coming in, but the, you know that right now I'm using these for on camera. So just dialing them back down to 1% is getting me the uh, results that I want. So firing up Fortnite, I basically had to set it to the lowest graphics settings besides the viewing distance, which I had set to far. And then it was set to 1080p 60 with G-Sync to get the results that I wanted. But this was a completely playable experience, and when I live streamed it, the people watching it thought everything looked and sounded great once I balanced out my mic with the gameplay volume. I don't know how other games will fare on this system though, so you might really need to play around with the graphics settings like playing in 720p in order to get good frames when you're playing. But this is actually where today's technology really comes in handy. Because if the game you want to play is available on Google Stadia, I highly suggest using that for this system because you're getting the full quality picture from Stadia servers, basically like a Netflix video feed, and then all your computer has to do is just display capture and then stream it, which is a lot easier on the computer than doing gaming and streaming at once. Lastly, this computer does have multiple USB 3.0 ports, as well as two PCIe X1 lanes, so I popped in an HD60 Pro here to capture some console footage. So if you're looking to capture consoles or do a two PC setup, this computer is very capable of doing that thanks to its ports. So with everything considered here, I think we have a pretty amazing setup for live streaming. 
especially with this PC here because I honestly think that streamers of any size could make great use out of this thing. Now I know in this video I talk mostly about the brand new user who doesn't own a gaming PC, so this acts as your gaming system and your streaming system, but I honestly think this shines a hundred times more as a dedicated stream PC if you already own a gaming system. Because if you're looking for whatever upgrades you might need to turn your gaming system into something that can support gaming and live streaming, you could either upgrade your GPU to something with that NVENC chip in it, or you could build this PC and add an internal capture card for a total price of around $300, and now you have a dual PC setup. Now, the benefits of a dual PC system is if your gaming PC ever crashes, which can happen quite a bit, your stream won't go offline and you won't lose viewers because your stream is being handled by a completely separate piece of hardware. So that's why I love this thing because it has a ton of connectivity so you can capture a gaming PC, a console, uh, multiple cameras if you wanted to. So there are a lot of possibilities here. So. You know, if you are a new user and you start out with this as your gaming and your streaming PC, and let's say that your channel's starting to take off and you wanna start making upgrades. Let's say you want to enjoy your games in a better resolution or frame rate. Well, you can invest in a gaming PC and turn this into your streaming PC, and so you can still get great use out of this. The same goes for your webcam. If you wanna graduate from the quality that you'd get from this webcam, because of those PCIe lanes or the USB ports, you can upgrade to a cam link and then use mirrorless cameras, which will make your quality a lot better. So honestly, there are a lot of possibilities here and it can sort of make your head spin, but that's what's really great about this setup, I think, is that it's great for streamers of all sizes, honestly, you know, maybe not every product, but you know, there's something here for everybody. But then when you build this system, it can actually grow with you as your channel grows. So I think that's really special. Now, if you have any questions about this setup, which I'm sure you might because I went over quite a lot here, uh, or if you have any suggestions of your own for this setup, be sure to leave a comment down below. And again, everything I discussed in this video is linked in the description panel. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great videos. Once again, my name is Steggy, and until my next video, I'll catch you guys later.